Today, a new series begins at Union Berlin. And at this overachieving club, our aim is to continue the rise of the Iron Ones, covering a season every single episode until we win the Champions League. They've been down as far as the fifth tier in Germany in the regional leagues in the 2005-06 season. And after a decade in Bundesliga 2, were promoted a few seasons ago and have impressed ever since, finishing in fifth place last season on the final day. And as you can see by their trophy cabinet, they have never won a Bundesliga or a DFB Pokal, which, as I've mentioned in the past, is my all-time favourite looking trophy. Yeah. Financially, we start with the second lowest turnover in the league. And our bank balance reflects that also. And we have a remaining debt of £43.5 million. Thankfully, though, there is money in the Bundesliga, especially if we finish in the top half. Board culture is to sign players from domestic rivals and to sign players under the age of 23, with the current season target being competitive in both the Europa League and the DFB Pokal. Now, I've messed around with the players we have on this 4-4-2 with two DMC to fit our best players and I'm going to try a fast-paced, cautious approach. I'm a big fan of their new signing Thorsby in midfield. His mental attributes are phenomenal and he is going to be a rock in there. The USA international Siabachu is going to be my target forward in this system. He's going to hold up the ball and hopefully set fellow strike partner Becker free. And speaking of Geraldo Becker, he is very quick and he's not bad at finishing either. He's kind of a winger turned striker but that's all fine as long as he contributes to some goals. My one and only probably signing of the summer is a technical director. Great start of my relationship with the players with what looks like 75 of my starting lineup are annoyed I didn't let Jackal, my starting centre-back, go to Leipzig for a million quid. I'm obviously not going to let that stand and let my best centre-back go for almost peanuts, age 24 with two years left on his contract. Guys, relax! Relax! First game of the season in the cup and we are missing Becker who's recovering from an injury. We got the job done against a lower division team comfortably with 39 Nine shots in total. First league match and it's a derby at home against Hertha. The Berliner derby and it can be very hostile. Still without Becker, we are going to have a job on our hands here. Match day one of the Bundesliga then and we can see both lineups. Hertha are going with a standard 4-3-3. And we gave the crowd some of a cheer early from a corner as Siobacu turned in his own rebound to make it 1-0. We were only ahead for a short time until lonely defender Diogo Late got caught on the ball and gifted her the Berlin and equaliser. We piled the pressure on in the second half and when the ball looped up for Thorsby, I almost Mourinho'd myself down the touchline. Moments later and once again we are attacking down the right, we catch their defender napping and our shot was saved and somehow we didn't score the rebound and the game finishes 1-1. He's bloody missed it! What a prat! What a- I'm going to try and bring you multiple episodes of this series each week, so make sure you are subscribed and you turn the bell on so you do not miss one. We've got a tricky game against Mines next and they've scored through our bad defending off a free kick. We bounced back on the half hour mark when Jordan Siabachu was played over the top and he found the finish. But we are our own worst enemies and more bad defending leads to Anisuo scoring his second of the game and the winner. RB Leipzig up next as well who's won two from two so far. I expected them to be better than us but looking at the statistics they absolutely dominated us really and we created very little. Maybe a trip to bottom of the league Schalke is exactly what we need. Before that, we have the club's first ever Europa League draw. We have to wait until pot three and the final group joining Kravena of Serbia and Ghent of Belgium. Great draw for us so far. The final team to join us though is Hearts from Scotland. And honestly, looking at the tables as a whole, I think we can be really happy that we have drawn, I'd say probably the worst group and we can look to progress through this for sure. We played more positive against Schalke Schalke making some tactical changes and it paid off in a 1-0 win where great wing play allowed Becker to score. Bayern Munich is our next opponent and we don't have our striker Becker because he's travelling to meet up with the Suriname squad. So I'll just take the loss and move on. First match in Europa League and we couldn't capitalise on our opponents going down to 10 men after the 10th minute with a straight red. We did take the lead a minute after the red card too and you'd think it would be an easy three points from here but in the second half we never closed down their run down the left hand side and allowed the man all the way to the byline to cut it back for the tap in. Very poor. An away trip to Cologne is always difficult and we fell behind after just five minutes through a wonderful finish off the crossbar. Luckily our 
how big American International headed us level two minutes later. Second half and Cologne retook the lead for a set piece of their own. And just to prove that the near post corners are still broken, we scored another one. 2-2 was the final score. A missed penalty cost us when we lost 2-1 to Ghent in the next Europa League match. And then a loss against Wolfsburg in the following match and I'm beginning to panic. And yes, I've changed skins twice during this episode already. I went from the Zealand 1 to the Tato 23 version, which you can find on FM Scout. I just prefer the interface of this skin rather than the Zealand 1, especially the player attributes being positioned here. Right back to the gameplay and I decided to change the tactics and go down the Route 1 style of play to try out this instead in a flat 4-4-2. Still uncautious and we are a lot more direct with a higher tempo. In transition, we are set to regroup but will counter and we are defensively sitting in a mid block and on a standard press and getting stuck in. The red card in the following match, probably because we got stuck in against Frankfurt, didn't do us much favours and we ended up going down 4-1 to the Eagles with them absolutely destroying us statistically with 25 shots on our goal. And we had to rely on a 90th minute winner in the Europa League to defeat Hart. Against Stuttgart, we scored a free kick. And then they scored a free kick. Thankfully, for the first time in a while, though, a goal from open play when Jamie Llewellyn scored his second winning goal in two games. A big three points in the league. Lawrence Shankland is a very good goal scorer and he put Hearts into the lead. But thankfully, the combination of Becker and Jordan combined to find an equaliser in Edinburgh. Mines absolutely battered us with shots in a 2-1 loss in the DFB Pacal, though. All the bloody resistance of a Poppadom catching a bowling ball. And when Bolkan missed a penalty and we scored, I felt really lucky. But we didn't track our runners, become lazy and conceded in the 88th minute. At least we can rely on broken game mechanics to take the lead against Ghent in a must-win game. And when they tried to push for an equaliser in the second half, we countered them and sucker punched them to make it 2-0 before Pantovic scored a penalty for us. We actually top our Europa League group with one game left, but find ourselves very low in the Bundesliga. All the way down in 16th! The best cross I have ever seen found Becker to put us 1-0 up in minute one against Gladbach. But they came back and battered us 3-1. Our 5-2 win against Cravena meant we stayed top of our Europa League group, but Leverkusen smashed us and grabbed a late 1-0 win in stoppage time three days later. Back to Berlin and we finally secure three points in the league after a month without against Augsburg with this 2-0 victory. No goals in the Freiburg game and we rest for the World Cup break. In which real-life favourites Brazil won, beating Croatia 3-0 in the final. And I'm quite curious, who do you think will win the World Cup this year? Let me know down in the comments section if you think you're a football expert. I dare you. I'm going to go with Portugal. Some bad news as we go into January as both of our starting fullbacks, Trimmel and Nico Grishelman, both don't want us to extend their contracts and looking to leave on freeze at the end of the season. I need to start selling some players to allow room in the budget to approach some new players, so I sold a backup winger for 1.8 million. I also sold the player I said I wouldn't sell earlier because everyone kept kicking off and I was peer pressured. We then scored this phenomenal Route 1 header from outside the box against Dortmund to take the lead. But we still lost 3-1. First signing as Union Berlin manager as we welcome Derlis Gonzalez from Paraguay for 800k. A quality winger who can play down both wings and can be a threat for us. And then we somehow managed to sign Omar Agic on the end of contract deal who rejected Juventus, Inter Milan and AC Milan to join us in Berlin at the end of the season. Still young and he has lots to improve on, but what a signing. Derlis Gonzalez instantly made himself a hero scoring 25 minutes into his debut from Mitchell's cross. But Hoffenheim got a long range equaliser through Krameritz six minutes later. Our big USA international then put us back ahead on the turn, firing into the top corner. But once again, Hoffenheim came back and equalised and in the dire minutes, we attacked and scored, fortunately through a deflected shot. A 1-1 draw with Werder Bremen then followed. And it was time for the Berlinger Derby once again on a Friday night. And they are rooted to the bottom with only nine points. Unlucky. <laughs> The first goal was a free kick late in the first half and we really had to dig in. Thankfully, a penalty pulled us back level and in the 86th minute, our Route 1 Tony Poulis football came up trumped when Becker found his pace and also the keeper's near post. 
great derby win, and that puts us at the dizzy heights of 12th. We then exploited the match engine once again against Mines with a corner, but the second goal was frankly hilarious, as the goalkeeper completely lost his head. And we got arguably the best result of the season against Leipzig next, and a Route 1 football again as Becker gives us the lead. And in the 93rd minute, a big boot from the goalkeeper set Jordan through to fire in the second. They did score in the 95th minute, but it was too late, and we took three points back to Berlin. A 1-1 draw against Schalke, and we now sit in 10th place, and Bayern Munich up next, while on a six-game unbeaten run. When Bayern Munich played Musiala in to score, we thought our run was over. But oh no, Jordan scored a penalty, and then put us ahead from terrible game mechanics, and we think we are going to cause a huge upset in Munich. But in the 95th minute, Bayern attack one last time, and slot through Mane to equalise. Oh, you're joking. We get our Europa League draw, and it's Real Batiste in the knockouts. Our run eventually came to an end against Cologne in a 2-1 defeat. Two more 1-1 draws in our first leg and against Borsberg, and all of a sudden, we haven't won a game in five. It was substitute right back Ryerson's run and eventual finish in the 89th minute that won the tie 4-3 on aggregate in the Europa League. We've become incredibly difficult to beat in the league, drawing another two before Dortmund finally ended our run. We just haven't won one for a while. Unfortunately, we had two suspensions in the Europa League first leg against Arsenal, and Bakayo Saka rinsed us with a hat-trick. So I guess we could just focus on the league and how high we can finish. Which is exactly what we did against Bochum, and we took the lead for a penalty kick. Bochum equalised soon after, but an unstoppable Geraldo Beckham free kick. Yeah, you heard me right. Our next three points came two games later, when Jordan Siabacu took advantage of Leverkusen's mistake and found the corner in a 1-0 win. Four games left of the season, and we sit in 11th spot. In the pouring rain against Augsburg, a Route 1 pass caught us out completely. Thankfully, though, Thorsby rescued a point from the spot. Sometimes it's just not your day, and this Freiburg game was just that. 3-0 loss at home. Not great at all. Trouble is, though, if you have too many of those games across the season, it will cost you a lot of positions, and Hoffenheim destroyed us with 26 shots. But Derlis Gonzalez's penalty got us three points on the final day. Good win against Werder Bremen. But I'm going to need your suggestions. We have a lot of players closing in on 30 and above, and to be fair, they ain't great either. We need cheaper, younger talents, and that's where your suggestions come in. I'm obviously working on a bit of a shoestring budget, and I'll reveal that budget in a second, so I need all of your suggestions of the players that you picked up for a good price who aren't looking at the end of their career. Overall, I think it was an average season. We finished 10th in the league with our rivals Hertha Berlin going down, which was a positive. Europa is where we shone though this season, and we were just unfortunate to play Arsenal in the quarterfinals, but the DFB Pokal was the most disappointing for me, and that needs to change. Jordan Siabacu was our only player to get double figures, and I'd like to come away from Route 1 football next season as much as I did enjoy it at times. The board are only giving me a C+, but the supporters absolutely love me. A+. And Siabacu actually broke the record this season. Crazy. So before I do reveal our budget for next season, make sure you are subscribing so you do not miss another episode, hit that notification bell, and if episode 2 is out already, I'll stick it up on the screen right here. And make sure you bring in those suggestions because I only have £7 million to spend in the summer.